My question is, do you think they're entitled to know who killed their dad? Eventually, as they get older, yes. I'm sorry? As they get older, yes. Brittany Bishop is a good friend of yours? Yes. April Shaw was in here? Yes. You got more friends than that, don't you, in this world? Um, I, I have a couple of other close friends, but close friends, no, not really, honestly. Well, you, you have several close friends, correct? A few, yes. And, and do you agree with Brittany where she says the two of you can share anything with each other? Yes. But you didn't share this with her or any of those other people, did you? No. And you didn't ask them for help or their spouses or boyfriends for help in going out there that day, did you? No. Okay. In the world, your universe of people to select to go out on this day to ask for a divorce was an ex-boyfriend who you had a toxic relationship with that you hadn't seen in seven years. That's who you chose to help you go keep Ben calm, correct? Correct, not to keep Ben calm, but yes, correct. Well, in case Ben got upset, he was there. That's why he was there, correct? Yes. You and Sam had your differences, did you not? Yes, Sam, quite, quite a few, yes. Yeah, but uh, Sam didn't kill his brother, did he? No. Sam was entitled to know who killed his brother, didn't he? Yes. And you never told Sam? No. And, and worse than that, you knew who the real killer was, and you told the police, not Michael Humphrey, but they ought to investigate Sam, correct? Yes. And what kind of cold heart lies within you? Objection, relevance, and improper lawyer comment. I don't think sustained. You were interviewed by law enforcement a number of times, correct? Yes. Matt Cook interviewed you? I don't know their names, okay. but, but yes, I, I will, yes. But let's, let's do it this way. You were interviewed a bunch by a bunch of cops, correct? Yes. I, I think Devin Faust said six days, six different times. Okay. Do you remember hearing that? Um, I'm sorry, no, I don't remember him saying okay. the number of days, but I, that's okay. Whatever you say. Well, I'm asking you. I, I don't remember the number of days, but yes, I was interviewed a lot by police. Okay. And on every one of those occasions, every one of those officers' job and goal was to find out who killed them. Yes. And it was their job and hope to bring that killer to justice, correct? Yes. And those guys were interested and involved in that pursuit, correct? Yes. And you lied to them every time. Yes. You never told them Michael. No. And not only did you lie to them, you misdirected them by telling them people like Sam Rennick, correct? Yes. Now, these 12 jurors, there's two alternates, these 12 jurors, their job is hopefully to discover justice and find out who's responsible for this murder, correct? Yes. And to hold them responsible, correct? Yes. If you're willing to lie to the police about such a vital matter, why should these jurors now believe you? I was lying to protect myself and I told a lot of really awful lies just to do that. But it's just too heavy and it's too much. And so much bad has come from trying to hide behind those lies. So I understand what the prosecutor's saying about all of the lies that I told, but all I can do now is just sit up here and tell the truth. And at least I will have gotten it out and I won't have to carry it anymore. I'm so sorry. You know, not only did you lie about Sam Rennick's involvement, you lied to cover up Michael's involvement, correct? Yes. You lied and gave a cover story to explain why Michael, you, and Ashley had a relationship, correct? Yes. And that, that lie was, we were just going to Michael for a stereo. Yes. Again, you were participating at that point in time, not in telling the cops who the true murderer was, but in covering up the murder, correct? 
Yes. Just like these text messages appear to a reasonable person to be, correct? I don't agree with that. Rachel Hunt. You saw her testify, correct? Yes. She's a co-worker friend of yours, not mine, not the cops, correct? She was no friend of mine, but yes, she worked for me. She, she had a relationship with you, not the cops, not, not, not me, correct? Correct. And she told this jury that the, either that day or the day before, smoking a cigarette with you outside the spa, you told her you were going out to the, to the snake facility with Michael to kill your husband. You remember that? Yes. Ashley Shaw told a story to this jury about her involvement, correct? Yes. And it involves a conspiracy to poison and murder your husband by poisoning and by shooting him. Correct? Yes. Michael Humphrey told a jury about how he learned about the poisoning and how he got involved and stood there and watched you murder your husband. Correct? Yes. And he's going to prison for the rest of his life on a second degree murder charge. Correct? I, I believe so. I don't know. I'm sorry. Now, out of the four of you that were involved in this incident, who stood to gain financially from Ben's death? No one. Okay. Who had a million dollar life insurance policy on their head? Ben. Okay. And who was the sole beneficiary of that life insurance policy should he be killed on June 8th of 2017? Um, I believe me. You, out of this group of four people, are the only one who had a financial motive to bet that would benefit if Ben was murdered, correct? No. Out of those four people, Rachel, Ashley, Michael, and you, correct? Yes. Okay. Who had a financial motive besides you? I don't think anybody had any sort of financial motive. Other than you, correct? I didn't have a financial motive. Okay. Well, let me phrase it a little bit differently. Who stood to benefit financially out of that group of four people? No one. Well, if he was murdered and we didn't figure it out, who would get a million dollars when he died as a result of this murder? My children. No. Who was the sole beneficiary? Me. You. Your children only got it if you were dead, correct? I think that's the terms of it. Okay, so again, let me ask the question. Listen very carefully. Out of these four people involved in this conspiracy, who is the only person in that group who had a financial benefit should Ben get murdered on June 8th, 2017? No one. Ben's life insurance, to my understanding, would go into the trust upon his death. That trust has, I am no part of that, so it would go on to Amelia. Okay. Were you in this trial? Yes, and that's exactly what the officer even said. Well, that Chuck was the trustee over the life insurance policy. Well, and did you hear the part where the officer said he was summarizing documents and didn't understand them because he's not a lawyer? Did you see that part? No. Oh, you didn't pay attention to that, did you? What about the part where Lindsay Kirk, you know Lindsay Kirker? Yes, I do. Did you, did you pay attention when she testified? Yes. And she said she sat across from you on a table, from a table and explained to you and Ben that if he were to die, you would benefit financially by receiving a million dollars. Do you remember that part of it? Per the terms of the life insurance, no, but that no, is no. separate from the trust. I asked her if this was part of the trust or separate, and she said what? It she, was separate. It's separate until it's put into the trust. She also testified that we never put money into the trust, and I'm not we did. About the trust. Lindley, I'm talking about the life insurance. I realize that, but you're asking about Lindsay's knowledge of an involvement in the trust, and she clearly did not have full knowledge of what was in the trust. So she might not know if the life insurance was ever moved into the trust because that was not her job. Well, she had full knowledge of the life insurance. Yes. Okay, and she said the life insurance upon Ben died. One million dollars went to you. That's what she testified to, correct? Yes. Okay, so if the jury is to believe Lindley's interpretation 
of her trust doc, her, her life insurance documents that she's an expert in and works at it on a daily basis. Or if they believe her, they should believe you that you are the sole person in this conspiracy that stands to financially benefit. No, and there are lots of documents with the trust. That's not what I asked you. I'm, no, I'm not an expert on it, but yes, that is what those documents show. And so, yes, Lindsay has, I, I mean, greatly more knowledge than I do about life insurance. And yes, I was listed along with the children on that life insurance. But well, maybe, would I have benefited from that? No. Well, maybe my last question to you will be this. When it comes to whether you're getting a million dollars life insurance policy upon the murder of your husband, should this jury rely on a professional dealing with those documents that you said she probably knows a lot more about? Or should they rely on your interpretation as you stand trial for murder in the first degree? I think they should look at everything. Okay. I'll live with that answer, Judge. I have nothing further. Read what? Read me, Lindley, I'd like to start off by giving you a chance to finally finish one of your answers. Um, so, Lindsay Kerber helped you invent establish the life insurance, correct? Yes. Was she involved at all with what you and Ben did with that policy once she had established it? No. What was your understanding of what had happened to that life insurance policy? that this, the exact same terms and things that Frank did with his in setting up his insurances and his trust is exactly what Ben had done, which would mean that Ben's life insurance would go into the trust so that it would be protected by the trust and it would go directly to his uh, uh, children. So I, I, I want to make sure everyone understand this, understands It was this. my understanding that the life insurance was in the trust and it would only pass down to the children. Because that's what Ben's father had done with his life insurance. Yes. And Ben had told you he set everything up the same way as his dad. Yeah. So even though when you first took out the policy, you were the sole beneficiary, right? Yes. And that's pretty common, I think, from my understanding, that the spouses are named as the beneficiaries. Yeah. But after Lindsay Kerber's involvement, after her job was done. Yes. It was your understanding that Ben had done the same thing his dad had done, the same thing he'd always done, and assigned that life insurance to the trust. Yes. And you weren't going to get a cent of it. Exactly. And, you know, let's say the jury doesn't decide to believe that. Can you talk about some of the things you lost when you lost Ben? Um, our home, our farm, um... I mean, really everything, our vehicles, um, you know, I was allowed to keep my vehicle um, because it wasn't included, um, but that was also kind of up for debate, um, and they were just trying to figure out what exactly all of the terms were, but essentially every single thing that Ben and I, um, you know, either just everything that Ben had went into the estate and everything. And the estate was controlled by the trust? Yes. So you lost your home? Yes. You didn't get any money from Ben's death? No. Your children lost their father? Yes. What about those uh, T-positive albino anacondas that each one, each baby was going to be worth 25000 Did you see any money from those after Ben died? Um, no. So... Like we were talking about earlier, it's kind of a niche for Ben, um, and just being, it, it, he was just really, really good with that species and had a lot of luck with it, and not a lot of people do. And so even um, Dave Levinson, when he came down and took over everything at the facility, and Dave has a great deal of knowledge in boas um, and keeping that sort of species, but... Um, that female, you know, after Dave came down and was taking care of everything, she never laid that litter that she was full of. So, so in addition to your home, all of Ben's estate, the VA. All right, Lynn Lee Rennick has been on the stand since mid morning, and she just told during cross examination by Kevin Zellner, uh, too heavy, too much to hide behind the lies, so I'm telling the truth today. Taking a break, we'll be right back.
We want to take you back into the courtroom in Missouri. Recraw redirect has completed. Now it's recrossed by the prosecutor of the defendant. Who don't know anything about the crime, don't know anything about the crime, aren't being interviewed by the police, but you are, correct? I'm sorry, what was the question? All these people on social media that you see falsely implicating this guy and his brother's death, all these people, they don't know the facts of the crime. They weren't there, right? Correct. They're speculating. They're guessing. Correct? Yes. But deep down in that heart of yours and in that brain of yours, you know who killed him, correct? Yes. And instead of telling the police Michael Humphrey, you tell them Sam Rennick. Yes. You, you throw the scent off of Michael Humphrey, correct? Yes. You throw the scent off of Michael Humphrey by telling the police you, Ashley, and him, part of this conspiracy, were together just for stereo. Another effort to throw the scent off of Michael Humphrey. Yes. You are a willing participant in killing, or in covering up Michael Humphrey, killing Ben Rennick, correct? <laughs> yes, I'm so sorry. And now, and now, those men sitting in the back that were seeking justice, who you lied to about the true killer, you now want these 12 people to believe you, correct? Yes. I bet you do. I don't have any other questions. Sustain. Redirect.